Hi guys, it's Mallory Wesson and welcome back to my channel. Today is something different. I am finally answering y'all's questions about study tips and all the things to get good grades in nursing school. I was waiting a little because obviously I wanted to make sure that I knew for a fact how, like how I study, like what is my study ways, what study tips do I have that actually got me through nursing school and helped me get good grades, not just passing grades. So in this video, I'm going to be telling you guys all the things, all the tips that I use when studying, how I study, um, all the things about studying. You guys have commented so many times asking me to do one of these videos. So here I am today answering all your questions and I'm super excited about it. If you guys are interested in how to study and get good grades at nursing school, make sure you keep on watching and let's get started. So first things first, obviously there's going to be some things in here that you guys are going to be like, that's obvious, but sometimes people don't know. So my biggest thing with studying is I need to be in the right space. I can't just study in a dirty room with no candle lit and no coffee or no tea. I have to be in the right space. So my number one thing is when I know I'm studying for the day, the first thing I'll do is I'll get up and I'll clean my space. I'll make sure my bed is made, make sure everything's clean and kind of get a good start on the day. That way I feel like my head isn't in a million places. I need to do all these things and I feel like I'm wasting my time studying. So I get up early, clean my room, make sure everything is clean and organized. And then I'll either make a coffee at my house or I'll go to the coffee shop and get a coffee or which you guys know, or I'll make a tea or go get a tea from Starbucks because for me, caffeine like helps me focus. I'm not sure why it just does. Maybe it's in my head. I don't know. Um, so those are the things that I do right away. After that, I make sure if I'm home that I have a candle lit because I like to have like a good environment when I'm studying like a like a study environment, you know? And even sometimes I will go on to um, Apple Music and type in study music or I'll go on YouTube and play like a study music playlist. Really quietly though, because I can't listen to music while I'm studying. It just isn't for me. Some people it is. Like everybody has different study ways. Everybody has different ways of learning. So if it helps you to listen to music in the background, then so be it. For me, no. <laughs> I can listen to study music very quietly though. So for each class, I study differently. So this course I'm in right now is a transition to RN course. So it's pretty much everything I've ever learned in nursing school ever. It is my comprehensive class. So I have three comprehensive exams, 50 questions each that are worth 30% or 35% of my grade. And then I have my comprehensive ATI, which is also everything I've ever learned. So I study a little bit differently for these types of exams because obviously there's not certain chapters to read. It's, you know, it, if you know it, you know it, if you don't, you don't. So I study a little bit differently for this class, but I am going to explain how I studied for in my last classes as well. That way you guys kind of um, have an idea. Like I said, number one, have a good environment to study in good environment, clean environment, get yourself a coffee, get yourself a tea, make sure you're in the right headspace to study. Secondly, make sure you take notes in lecture. I know because I used to say it, well, I used to be like, the teachers just teach so much. They don't teach around our exams. They're just teaching everything, which is true. But at the same time, they know what's on your exam. They're not, they don't want you to fail most of the time. <laughs> Some teachers a little iffy, but most of the time they want you to pass really bad because it makes them look better. So if you really pay attention in your lectures, I really highly suggest you pay attention during lectures and take notes. So for my teachers, they either would do PowerPoints or they would do OneNote, which is like they kind of, it's like PowerPoints, but like in a note form. So during class, I would listen to the lecture and when the teacher starts, like she'll talk about a concept and then she'll go really in depth about certain parts of that concept. Make sure that you write those in bold, bold it, color it, whatever you need to do so you know that is important. Teachers emphasize on things that will be on your exam. No matter what you say or what you think, I promise you, your teachers emphasize what is important. They will. I know you guys 
think I'm crazy, but if you actually listen and like pay attention, they will bold things or say them multiple times or skim other things that they're like, this isn't important. So I highly suggest actually listening to lectures and taking notes on lectures. Personally, for me, I know your teachers say read ahead and take notes before. I don't do that, which everybody learns differently. But for me, it just doesn't help me that way because I don't really know what I'm reading. I don't understand it because I haven't learned it yet. And I'm also not, I'm more of a visual learner. So I don't do well just reading a textbook. So once I listen to the lecture and I have an idea of everything, then I will go back in the textbook and read over the concepts or things I didn't understand um, or watch the recorded lectures or even most of the time, if I don't understand something and the teacher didn't explain it in a way that I understood it, like I said, I'm a visual learner, so I will go on YouTube and I'll type in um, diabetic ketoacidosis or hemophilia, and I will take notes on the YouTube video because YouTube videos are fun. You know, they're like entertaining and they help you remember things. And a lot of them have like rhymes and riddles and all these things, and it helps you remember. So that's what I do. Um, so yes, listen to your lectures, take notes on your lectures, go to class. I know you guys are like, that's so obvious, but seriously, go to class. You miss one class and you're behind. Like, you feel like you learn nothing that whole part of the exam, so. Next, I make a study guide for every single exam. Some people like their study guides in black and white. Me, no. I like my study guides colorful and bright and I bold things and I make things in red and I do all the things but the way I make my study guides is I take the syllabus like I showed you guys and on your syllabus it will say theory content or theory concepts those are the concepts that you need to know those are need to know concepts that will be on your exam so what I do is I take those concepts put them on a word document and just go one by one look in the textbook look in your ATI book look online, get all the things that are important and make a study guide out of those. And that's how I do it. And I will show you guys, um, examples that I've done. I have, so, I mean, I have, these are all study guides that I have. I mean, yes, I've been in nursing school for like two and a half years, but, and there's more. My, I gave my friends some that are behind me so that they could, um, borrow them. But I'm going to show you guys kind of examples that I have that I've so done. I was going to show you guys some examples of study guides that I've done so you guys can kind of just see how I do them this is for my exam that is this week as you can see um, these are the concepts that I was telling you guys about that I make a study guide with and I bold I have examples here to kind of apply the knowledge that I've learned and all of these extra little writings are after I had my study guide done, which was a week before my exam, and I wrote these after. Um, but yes, it's very colorful, but I have all like the most important things in red highlighted. Um, so yes, there's so much. So this was for next week's exam. And then I will show you guys my last comprehensive exam. This is my comp ATI. So, again, there's the, one of the concepts. And all of these are important things that I highlighted. These are all important. So when I'm taking the exam, I remember these and I'm like, oh yeah, I remember seeing that on my study guide. So there's a lot. I mean, I could go on and on. I have so many. So there's that. There's more for you guys. Um, and then I'll show you guys some of my past study guides that I've made. These are other ones I've made, and I still see there's etiology, clinical manifestations. So, here's another study guide. 
all of these extra writing is just like after I've studied, after I've made the study guide and I'm going back over and just things I think are like important. Like I said before, take your syllabus or some teachers give like a concept review, take those concepts and make a study guide out of them and make it colorful, make it fun and make it like memorable because people just use black and white and I know some people like are like I don't like colors but when I'm telling you when you're taking an exam and you're like ooh that was in red you'll remember like oh that was bolded oh that was highlighted like you'll know like during your exam that's the most important thing another thing when you're doing concepts make sure that you include four things really four things obviously the concept that doesn't count but what is it so what is diabetic ketoacidosis what causes diabetic ketoacidosis and who's at risk for diabetic ketoacidosis risk factors all of that second is going to be clinical manifestation signs and symptoms so are they going to have um an elevated glucose level obviously um they could have ketones in their urine like things like that like know all the signs and symptoms but mostly know what sticks out about that specific concept because there's so many signs and symptoms and people there's just so many that you can't remember all of them so what sticks out to you what is the most important the most important thing about that concept is it ketones in the urine that makes it different than other things is it you know um only happens in type 1 diabetics rather than type 2. Things that stick out are things that you're going to need to know. Um, number three is nursing interventions. What are you going to do for the patient with diabetic ketoacidosis? What are you going to do for the patient that has hemophilia or sickle cell disease or a sickle cell crisis? What are the are you as a nurse going to do for this patient what are your interventions so for diabetic ketoacidosis you're going to obviously give them insulin that's your number one priority insulin um you're going to give them normal saline bolus you want to check their blood glucose levels you want to check their neuro status make sure that they're not having any seizures make sure that you know just listen to everything your assessments um urine output daily weights all that things know the nursing interventions but bold the things that are most important like giving regular insulin that needs to be in bold that's important um making sure that they're on normal saline that's important um glucose levels that's important assessing their lung sounds and their neurostatus yes that's all important but what's most important in that disease process with sickle cell disease what are the nursing interventions you want to make sure that they're well hydrated because they're going to have pain unless they're well hydrated. You need to make sure that they're on pain medications every however long. You need to keep them on pain medications. You need to put warm compresses on them. No ice for these patients because cold can trigger a sickle cell crisis. So you want to make sure that one, they're on bed rest. Two, lots and lots of fluids. You want to make sure that they um, are on pain management. You just need to make sure that you're writing the things that are most important and highlighting the most important and bolding them, putting them in red. Because when that test comes, you'll understand that was most important with this disease process. Number four, you're going to need to know the treatment for every disease process. When I say treatment, I don't mean know every single antibiotic and every single different type of uh, fluids they're going to be getting and every single food they'll be able to eat. And I'm not saying that. I'm saying know the most important treatment. What is the most obvious treatment for this patient? So for a patient with diabetic ketoacidosis, the most important thing is going to be regular insulin, normal saline, treatment what is the most important yeah there's a million other things that they could get they could get kx kx late for metabolic acidosis if they're in metabolic acidosis yeah that's important you need to know that but what's most important is that you need to give them regular insulin you need to make sure that they're on normal saline you need to make sure that they're getting their glucose checked all that patient with 
sickle cell crisis. What is most important? What's the treatment for this patient? Well, this patient, the most important thing would be to make sure that they're on fluids, to make sure that they are getting pain management because they're in a lot of pain and the pain will not go away without pain management, making sure they're on bed rest, making sure that they're laying, you know, no more than 30 degrees in the bed. Um, things like that are most important with these patients. And you need to know most, 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 because these questions are going to come up and it's going to say something and you're going to be like, well, that could be, I mean, they do get treated with that. They do get treated with A, B, C, and D. What is most important? What did you highlight or bold in your study guide? That will be the answer. Don't make this giant study guide on every single thing in the textbook that every single antibiotic and all the things because your brain is going to be so boggled with all these different things that you're going to be like, yes, skim over them because they will pop up on your exam, but know the most important thing about that disease process. So one, know what it is, who's at risk, what causes it, all of the things. Number two, no signs and symptoms, clinical manifestations. What is this patient going to present as? Number three, nursing interventions. If this patient comes in to you, what are you going to do for them? How are you going to help them? What, what is most important? Number four, treatment. How are you, how is the doctor going to treat this patient? What do you expect the doctor is going to prescribe for this patient? What will you be implementing for this patient? If you know those about each disease process, you will do great. You won't just skim by, you will do amazing in nursing school. Another thing you guys are gonna think I'm crazy, but my life is so busy and I'm sure all y'all's life is so busy, but is sitting down in the beginning of the week and writing out my week, what I have to do that week, what's due that week. Do I have, um, when I have classes, when I have time to study, do I have to work that week or dinners or things like that. I sit down and I write down everything I have to do that week. Cause then I know when I have study time and I, I literally map out my study time. I know you guys think I'm crazy, but it really helps because you know, okay, Wednesday morning is my study day. I'm going to get up early. I'm going to get everything clean. I'm going to start my day off and study all day long. And you know, because it's already in your planner, it's planned out. So for example, this is for this week. So you guys are able to see all the pink is study time that I'm studying for this exam. Um, I have a to-do list here, but the most important thing is mapping out your study time because it will help you to actually sit down and study and feel like you don't have other things to do because you'll know, all right, I'm studying, at, I'm studying on Wednesday all day long. So Tuesday night, I need to, you know, do my laundry and put all the, all the things away. That way when you're studying, you're not like, oh, I really should be doing this. I really should be doing that because if it's mapped out and it's already in your planner, then you work around your study time. So that's one thing that's really helped me is mapping out time to study because I know I'm really busy and I sometimes I'm like, I don't have time to study this week. But if you sit down and map it out, well, when could I study? Oh, I could study two hours this night. I could study three hours this morning. I could study in between my classes or whatever. Map out your study time. It really helps, I promise. I think that's pretty much it. I mean, I can go on and on about studying because I have tried so many different ways studying. Um, my first exam in nursing school ever, it was my fundamentals class. It was my first fundamentals exam. And I think I got like a 68 on it and I was mortified. I cried. I was like, I am not going to be able to pass nursing school. There is no way because I failed my first exam and I studied so hard, but I studied wrong. I studied for so like so much, so much, but I did it wrong because I was going through and reading every single word in the textbook and not knowing the most important things about each disease process and not knowing how to treat it and what the, like the exact signs and symptoms and the most important things about each disease process. And I wasn't listening to my teacher about the key words she said and things she emphasized. So after that first exam, I changed my whole way of studying and it has helped me. I'm telling you, I have done very well in nursing school so far. I don't want to jinx myself, but I have two more exams left. I'm feeling okay. 
Um, of course, I'm nervous, um, very nervous for NCLEX, but throughout all my classes, I've gotten A's and B's. I think I've gotten like maybe one C. A C for us is an 84 though, so I've been doing very well. Um, A's and B's, I have studied really, really hard. I kind of have gotten my way of studying down, like down pat. Um, and key thing, when you're done making your study guide, have it done like your exams on Friday, have your study guide done by like the Friday before. That way you have that whole week to just read it over and just jot little notes down and um, watch YouTube videos on things you don't fully understand. Have that study guide done with because you don't want to be sitting here looking for the things on the study guide and not actually studying the content. Some people get their study guides done like two days before and they're like, well, I made this beautiful study guide. Well, you didn't even have time to study it. So make sure you're Put a due date on that study guide, even though it's just for you. Make it due a week before your exam. That way you have that whole week to study and read it over and take notes and watch videos and do all the things. I'm telling you, all these tips I'm giving you guys really do work. Um, some people learn differently though. Some people just read a textbook and it just clicks in their head. For me, I'm not one of those types of people. Once I make a study guide, I don't look back in the textbook because I just get confused. <laughs> One thing that I do is practice questions. It was easier back when I was in med surge and pathophysiology and mental health and mom baby and pediatrics and all those because I was able to go on test bank. There's like, if you look up test bank on Google, there's like test banks and nursing. There's like different ones that you can do and you can find your textbook and actually there's like so many questions. So what I would do is I would be like, okay, well this exam's on chapter five, six, seven, eight, whatever, whatever. So I would go on the test banks and I would go to chapter five and I would do all the questions on chapter five, all the questions on chapter six. I think there's like 40 on each chapter, but I would do them and memorize them. And most of the time on my exams, there would be something similar. And I'd be like, oh, that was a question. I remember reading and don't only read the question and the answer. Make sure you're reading the rationale and understanding why you got it wrong. And even if you got it right, read those rationales because it's other information that you're going to need to know. The biggest thing with nursing school is don't just memorize it. You need to understand it. Why, why is it the way it is? That's pretty much all I have for you guys. I hope I helped you guys. It's so hard to explain how you study because everybody has a different way of studying. So I kind of just tried to like pull all the things, all the tips that I have together um, for you guys. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and you turn on my post notifications so you do not miss an upload. I upload every single Monday at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Anyway, that's all I have for you guys. I hope you take these tips. You make beautiful study guides. Make sure you send me pictures of them. I love seeing colorful, vibrant study guides. Send me pictures, show me using my tips, tag me on Instagram, do all the things. I am here for you guys. If you guys ever have any questions, if you are confused about something, if you need tips or questions or anything, make sure you ask me. I'm here. You, you know my Instagram, it's down below. Message me on Instagram, comment on YouTube. I will get back to you guys. I love all of you guys so much. You guys really mean the world to me. You guys have supported me for a while, long time since I've started, and it really shows, and you guys have helped me so much get through nursing school. Two more exams left, 15 more days left, until I am graduated, and I cannot be more excited to start my career and grow and bring you guys along with me. I can't wait to show you guys all the things, NCLEX studying, NCLEX stuff, all the things, new grad things, residency programs, everything. So just make sure you guys subscribe. You turn on my post notifications because I will be posting every single week like I have been. But thank you guys so much for watching and I will see y'all in my next video. Bye guys.